welcome to Dead in the Cabin. Spooky, spooky. October 1st. Oh, yeah! Perfect. Yeah, normal time. Some stories. Yeah, we got some spooky stories. Mm -hmm. We got some spooky stories. stories. What do we got? Alright. I'll start off. I'm going to hit them with the classic Bigfoot spooky story. So this was probably the summer of, if I had to guess, 2013, possibly 2012. I was 19 at the time. Somewhere from 18, 19, for sure. And my cousin was with me. He was four years younger than me, so he was he had just turned 15 because it was in August. I do remember that sometime. So we were outside. We lived in Fairview, North Carolina. This place is gorgeous. If you're not familiar with it, it's a nice little place. It's kind of underdeveloped, and it's just a wonderful, beautiful little spot. It lives up to its name. And there's a lot of hills, mountains. And from what I've heard, that's great territory for Bigfoot. But either way, so we're, it's probably 2 or 3, it's, yeah, let's say anywhere from 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. We're just outside, chilling, being goofy, being, you know, teenager boys, hanging out. And uh, we were, he had his stereo in his treehouse. And we were, and the song that was playing on the radio at the time was Benny and the Jets. And it was in that part where, he, you know, it was just going, Benny, Benny. And about like the fourth or fifth Benny, we're, we're singing with it too. We're, you know, geeked up. We smoked a bowl or two, but we weren't tripping because we smoked you know often but we're, we're feeling good and we'd hit about the third or fourth benny and all of a sudden we just see this big finger like if you could just put your index finger on top of your index finger just matted in fur like just kind of brownish silver fur going back and forth with this long black fingernail like a talon almost just ch -ch -ch -ch. and i've seen plenty of bears definitely black bears and they obviously have black fur didn't match this at all didn't even have like this looked like a, a hominid, a primitive, like a primate, even an ape-type finger. Something that belongs to our immediate relatives, you know. It was something that was definitely a hominid. It didn't really, yeah, remotely even look like a bear. And to me, the way the bear's paw of organ, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see how it could, like, individuate as well as, like, a primate's finger digit could. Yeah. And so it yeah. just went back and forth. What felt like eternity is probably just like three seconds of it just kind of going back and forth in between, you know, coming through the cracks, the boards, and the treehouse, just going back and forth like it was searching for something. To me, the music just went silent. Like it was going off, but like I was just in panic mode. Honestly, like I was just frozen with fear. So it was my cousin. We just, as far as you, you know, as far as you could, like scoot away in a treehouse in the corner, just looking at this thing. And as yeah. soon as it drops down, looks away, we look at each other, and we just stay frozen for at least 15 minutes didn't hear this thing obviously didn't hear this thing walk up but it hear, didn't hear it walk away we turned the music down after we were kind of like freaked out for a second didn't you know see any type of tracks or anything like that like it was yeah it was weird it was beyond explanation i was trying to write i still try to rack my brain about you know i've even thought about somebody in a suit this and that but it'd have to be just a intricate suit it'd have to yeah, yeah. it just it was weird and the treehouse yeah. granted was about close to 13, 14 feet in the air. So, you know, you know, up on the tree. So this thing had either had the ability to climb up, obviously, or was tall enough to reach, you know, mm -hmm. from, so I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure I understand. Siri, <laughs> I don't even want you listening to this, Siri. At least that was right at the end of the story. That was yeah. interesting. She's like, okay, now that your story's over, let me process that whole She's story. She's like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Siri, yeah, let me help really you understand. Weird. It it's like so specific, you know. Like it was, it was his like finger, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you could detail it. That's what was crazy. Yeah, like like well, I didn't who, see any other like part of. It. That's what kind of makes it wild. Like, well, who's gonna yeah. go around yeah. specifically? Like, okay, I'm gonna use a fake finger right. and like what on a pole and yeah. go around scaring. And anybody kids I knew is not gonna spend the money on that. I mean, unless yeah. it was just some rich person going around, but. What was cool, also, I left this out. I didn't find this out until like two years later when I was researching it, but apparently around that time, in the same exact spot in Fairview, not our property, but in Fairview, that, that town, there was, it used to be called Lemur. I can't remember what it was abbreviation for, but it was a paranormal team in Nashville that was pretty you know, popular and prominent about 10 years ago. And um, 
they actually conducted a whole like research, like investigation in trying to find and you know track Bigfoot in Fairview because there were so many sightings of people reporting to see this mm -hmm. this creature. You know, so that just makes it even more like crazy. And just, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting. One. It is. It makes uh yeah. makes me think too. We've talked about it in another podcast, but how um, Bigfoot. The idea of Bigfoot being multidimensional. Yeah, for um, sure. And it's, it's becoming like a, a popular theory to yeah. a lot of people. But it makes sense, too, that it could be... Like, because I almost think of... Like, I think of the fourth dimension as, like, the dream space. Or at least when we're sleeping and we're dreaming, it's, it's like, as close as we can get to perceiving the fourth dimension, yeah. at least. Like, you know. Yeah. However it really is, but... Um, so it's almost like in a dream like I that doesn't if you were like oh I had a dream the other day it wouldn't particularly your story would just be like okay yeah, yeah. Then, you know that's a crazy yeah. dream cool yeah because you know? yeah because you've had crazy dreams too it's yeah. Just like, yeah so like in the dream space things don't really necessarily have to make the same kind of sense that they no, do no they don't so and they can yeah the dreams are fascinating for sure mm -hmm. it, makes me think about my experiences with sleep paralysis you know I mean some people Ooh. would classify them as paranormal but I can definitely see it being scientific I see it from both angles honestly but mm -hmm. whatever it is despite if you want to explain it scientifically didactically or if you just want to go a spiritual route it's it's terrifying and it sucks and it, it's a feeling of helplessness which you don't get to feel too often and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a shitty feeling man it's a terrible feeling yeah. like just being to me, I can usually feel it coming on. There's like little, like, uh, what's the right word? Auras, if you will, for people that are familiar with like seizures and epilepsy. They have these auras where these like tells uh, that something, and they're about to have a seizure, something's about to happen. Yeah. I get them with these. Like, there's, like, when I'm trying to go to sleep, there's physical twitches in my body, my legs, especially little mental tells that let me know that like I'm, this is about to happen like there's a warning essentially that look mm -hmm. you, you try to sleep right now this is going to happen yeah and i've sometimes just stayed up you know skip it and it kind of passes but if i roll with it and go to sleep it's guaranteed i'm getting sleep paralysis and basically like the most i'll explain my, my first times but the most recent one was actually to me the scariest from my perspective because in this one i was laying down in it was tied into what was really going on. That's what freaked me out. So my fiance at the time, my wife and my stepdaughter were in the kitchen with the light on. I was in my room, which is facing the kitchen, but I was in the dark, ready to go to sleep, you know, tired, but I could feel like my body or whatever it is that causes this wasn't ready to sleep or something. I don't know. But either way, I could feel it coming on. I woke up in the dream, completely paralyzed, but fully conscious of my wife screaming bloody murder saying help me help me help me more screaming terrified i'm seeing shadows move i'm seeing things crash and i can't do anything but i've learned through this and i'm sure other people can attest to this I, you can kind of scream your way out sometimes if you're not too deep into it and this was scary enough to, to cause me to do that i just it's like in the dream that lucid state you're forcing yourself to scream until you actually physically wake up screaming and it wakes you up it's like to me it's how i pull myself out of it and uh I woke up screaming, and I was like, are you okay? You okay? And Jada's like, yeah, we're totally fine, baby. What are you talking about? Like, And I was just like, wow. okay, well, I literally just saw y'all. I like, couldn't do anything about y'all just getting fucking attacked. And like, shit, it just... Dude, that's and the crazy. first time it ever happened was I was in that. This was, I guess, maybe eight years ago. I was in my house at the time. Same type of situation, but I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know these were tales and things about you know, what signifies what's going to happen. I go into the state. I see this vision of there was a horse pasture in a big field that we lived on. Or it was right behind us. So you'd go up the little hill, you'd crest up the hill, and then you'd have the horse pasture and the field and the fence. Well, I was at the, at the corner of that fence in the field. There's a big street light. And I had this like vision, this flash, this dream of where there was this large dark entity not even a man I don't call it a man but a hominid shape just a dark entity standing at that street light then in the blink of an eye goes to the next scene he's at my front door the next thing he's at the door of my bedroom and then the next scene he's over top of me opens my mouth and just starts opens his mouth through and just starts sucking some shit out of me almost like fucking what is that stuff called in Harry Potter Dementors or something 
Oh yeah, where so, they suck yeah. your soul out. That's mm -hmm. literally what it looks like. It felt like it was just he was sitting there sucking something out of me, yeah. and I was so terrified I screamed myself awake, and that was my first experience that's a with it. But it's, that's a super good one. It's, it'll make you want to just not go back to sleep, man. Mm -hmm. It gets crazy. I've, I've learned it. now just to pray, just to kind of like dispel it and get my mind in the right place because it just. Yeah. Whew, I watch something happy for a second and then maybe yeah. go to sleep, but like, yeah, this is it's weird, man. Dude, that's crazy. It's really weird. I can picture that too. Like, being in a. Like, I can picture it as like a old school black and white silent. Yeah, sure. We would film. just like go to a abrupt thing. It would and just be abrupt. Yeah. Bruh. Like, just imagine blinking your eyes. Blink your eyes. Boom. Yeah. Blink your Every eyes. Every time boom. you blink. Every time you blink, you're open mm -hmm. to a new scene, and he just got... And it's like he just had to get permission to enter all these places or whatever. He just stopped at the door. Mm -hmm. And then the next door. And then right over, it's like... What the fuck is that? Super interesting. Yeah. I've had... Uh, here's here's a kind of a different vibe. I've got one that's less spooky but I don't I don't have very many paranormal stories I have one that's not my own but I can still tell it it's pretty yeah. creepy um, but uh, as far as my stories go uh, I have a story when, when I was I think it was probably six um, we had just moved to uh, Charlotte North Carolina um, and my aunt and uncle, who's older than my dad, and my mom, they moved there and kind of were like, you know, move here and yeah, we'll we'll help you out with stuff and yada yada and um, because it was uh, me, my sister, and then eventually my brother, um, and uh, but when we first moved down there, it was just me and my sister was a baby, like basically a newborn baby. Yeah. So. Uh, we're in this new apartment that we've only lived in maybe a few days at this point. Um, if that, it might have been even the first night, like six, six years old. Like, you know. yeah. um, but I remember going in to, like it's nighttime, all the lights are off. Um, some of the street lights are shining in through the windows and it was just this different vibe than I've ever experienced. First time I've ever lived in an apartment as opposed to a house. Right. So, yeah, maybe that energy was involved in it, you know, being an apartment instead of a house. But I get creeped out and I'm like, you know, I don't feel comfortable here. I go into my parents' room and I crawl into bed with them. I don't know. 11, 12 at night. I, we, we've all already gone to bed, and um, I think I woke back up. Uh, but I definitely did go into their room um, because uh, I, don't know, I, I, I remember it not like a like a dream. I remember it like a memory of yeah. any other instance when I was a kid. Um, crawl into bed with them, and they're kind of like tossing and turning. My dad's like. Oh, Again, don't sleep in your own bed, pass it back out. Um, and my mom just kind of like snuggles or whatever. Now, my newborn baby sister's bassinet is at the foot of the bed. Mm -hmm. And um, as I'm laying there, kind of just looking around the room, observing the light and the shadows, and uh, trying to just relax and get comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I look down to the foot of the bed, to the bassinet, and um, as my eyes are focusing, it's, you know, sometimes at, at night, if there's just enough light, you'll see some stuff, but it'll still cast shadows, and you can't tell if the shadows are, like, moving, or it's dark enough, you know, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't fully like that, like, it, it was an instance where there was enough light for me to see the details of the room, to where there shouldn't be like yes it was dark but there shouldn't have been there were two shadows at the foot of the bed standing on either side of the bassinet mm -hmm. um, and it was almost like they were human shaped yeah. looking down onto my sister mm -hmm. and I remember just watching it for a minute and they kind of did move around like I'm saying like yeah. shadows sometimes do but um, it, it was just so person like and shaped in it traditional person shape right um, so 
So I don't know. And it didn't necessarily give me a creepy vibe, but it gave me a vibe of like something something is off. Right. Like this should like be this here. looks like people. <laughs> it shouldn't be here yet. Yeah. And there's not too many things that could give off that, you know, it's not like people could argue, well, you know, leaves from a tree, but mm. you would see the little serrations, alterations to the shape, you know. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. That's wild. That's pretty. Yeah, and it was through the blinds too, so it was kind of like filtering it yeah. enough. So I mean, it it could, it definitely could have been something was outside making more of a shadow than everything else in a particular way over the bassinet. Yeah. Like it's it yeah, is that is possible. weird though that for it did. Yeah, <laughs> like of all the shapes that that because even still in a sense that's why it always stuck with me. That's the only things that yeah. stick with me is even if I explain it away, it it. When it's like the the best answer, mm -hmm. it's just so outlandishly like coincidental. You're like, oh wow, what a coincidence that it yeah. would do that. You know, that's when I'm like, even still, like whether it was or not, the fact that it did that mm -hmm. is makes it just as like paranormal. Yeah. Created a trauma. A Created a, you know? a memory yeah, it, in in your in who you are, and that's yeah. that's that's what comes from these paranormal. That's how a lot of people get into this. They're like. They never had events or even believed much in it, and then they have something happens where they can't explain it rationally, and it changes them, and it makes them see things differently and yeah. those things differently. And so that is a, tra a trauma. Yeah. Trauma doesn't always have to be like bad or negative. It just means it has like a significant effect on who you are in your nervous system. Lasting impact. Yeah. Yeah. I've um, I have I have a couple more. Do you guys have anything? Yeah, I got like 10 minutes. I'm gonna drop mine in real quick. And so another one that was just classic to me. I've actually had a lot. Like I won't go deep into it, but like air quote prophetic dreams, dreams that come to pass. Dreams I call perspective dreams where I'm literally from the perspective of a friend, like dreaming from through their eyes and they go through an event. I'll bring it up to them. They're like, hey, yeah, that happened. Like. I did with my friend who got in a fight with his uncle. I did it with my friend who had a pregnancy, you know, scare. Like, it's weird, just multiple times. But either way, this was cool, man. I was probably 17 at the time. A bunch of friends of us, we were in Candler, Comedy Valley. And uh, this is where my friend lived. Beautiful little spot. There's a lot of wooded areas and stuff. But we were outside. There's a big clearing in between the woods. It was the backyard of my friend's house. We always did bonfires over there. We had probably 10 people over. So I know at least 10 other people saw this. And uh, me and my friend were just kind of shooting the shit, hanging out, drinking a beer. It's first beer, definitely not intoxicated at all. We looked straight up in the sky. It's probably 9, 10 o'clock. Beautiful night. I mean, just stars in the sky clear. But we see this oscillating orb of energy. I hate to say just energy, but yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, it's oscillating energy that would just change in color. And it would fluctuate slightly in its shape. It, would just, it wasn't static. You could tell it was just moving in motion. And uh, if I had a guess, it was at least 100 yards above the tallest trees in his backyard. And the tallest trees he had were some pine trees that were probably at least 30, 40 feet tall. So it was quite a bit above that. But not so far away where you'd like, oh, it's a plane or a mistake. Nothing like that. And you can never mistake this for a craft that I've seen. But either way, we're sitting there and we, we're looking at it. And me and my friend actually kind of both explained the situation, this experience. It seemed like as soon as we became aware of it, like we're aware that this is something that shouldn't be or something we've never seen, it's like it became aware of that within us and then mm. acted to it. And I saw the shape just pick a solid color, just turned orange solid, drop straight down, like just down a little bit, and then straight up and disappeared. Like it was just like a boop, boop. And by the time it was coming back up, it just dipped out, wow. just vanished. And me and my friend were both just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what was that? That's super interesting. That's another significant one, yeah. That shit was crazy. The, the light that I saw one time in the sky acted like a star. Mm. Like it looked like um, just the brightest, like Jupiter in the sky. Right, just super. Your like, stands out. What is that? Oh, it might be a planet. Yeah, it's Jupiter. <laughs> um, well, I look up at this thing, and I'm like, that, like, Jupiter's over here, that one looks kind of orange-yellow, like, that's maybe Mars. Venus shouldn't be visible right now, 
Um, I ended up looking it up later, um, and it it wasn't it wasn't anything natural. It wasn't a natural phenomenon. Nothing. Yeah, that was suspected. Yeah, but you'll know it's it. So what happened is um, I'm looking up at it. Uh, Patty and I had just gotten home from work, and I stop. I look up. I see it. Oh "Oh, shit! And she's like going in the door, and I go to call to her to be like, "Hey, come look at this thing." Mm And uh, she shuts the door behind her, and I I go back um, to look at it, and the moment that my gaze fixates back to it, mm-hmm. um, not a half a second later, uh, it almost like it it recognized that I looked back to it, um, and like tried to get Patty's attention. I was like, oh fuck that, we got to dip, um, and it dims down to where I could barely see it, like the dimmest star you right. might see in the night sky. And then, still barely able to see it, I watched this thing streak away off through the sky, like shooting star speed, if not faster. That's great. That's so, great. that, like, that to me, hmm. I don't know, and the fact that it imitated what, like a planet, or or a bright star, star like all, like, all the, and yeah. shooting star. But yeah, things that so. shouldn't, yeah. there's nothing that we know of that should be able to do all of that. Exactly. Know? So, I don't know that it was paranormal. I don't know that it was alien. I don't know that it was military. I don't know what it was. But it, it was something, and it was something we shouldn't have. We, we, we aren't known to have as a human species. Yeah. So, super interesting. What's cool is a lot of time, you know, shout out Blurry Creatures, I listen to their podcast a lot, their podcast a lot. and uh, one one thing that you'll hear from a lot of people on there, like just from what I've heard from videos on YouTube and various sources and stuff, new friends, is that a lot of times they'll see these things around the same time, like in correlation, they'll see maybe what we saw, like something in the sky. And a couple of days later, see a big foot. You know, like, not always, but a lot of times I've seen that with people, just that a paired up experience. Mm-hmm. So I think that kind of lends to, like, potential Bigfoot, whatever these species are, could be interdimensional. They could be linked to these crafts, these things we see in the air that might be just a conduit through which they come through. Who knows? Yeah. It's got to mm-hmm. be something to it, because, I mean, we're not finding the physical blood evidence, so... Mm-hmm. It's got to be something more to these entities. Yeah. You have, you have one? Um, I mean, the only thing that was crazy that I saw that I can't explain, other than my dreams, because if that's what you're talking about, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I have those like every night. <laughs> like, I don't know if I lucid dream or just... Yeah. I don't know, I'm so prone to dreaming, but like yeah, I can kind of control dope. what I'm doing in my dream, and I remember it like That's very good. specific. Yeah, you'd know if you had a night t- or a night paralysis, because yeah. it's like, it's that being lucid, but no control. It's like That's I said, it doesn't make it lucid, but the awareness is like being lucid, but no control. Hmm. See, so yeah, lucid dreaming is cool, because like you said, you can actually control and dictate what's going on. Yeah. And remember it. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, the night terror is, it, it's usually, isn't it, um, usually like you're, you're in, like you're confined to your bed. Yeah. Yeah, it's different than like a normal dream where like, you're not walking around where it's, like experiencing. Yeah. A lot of times in dreams, I'm not even a person or me, I'm just seeing scenes of stuff and mm. that's how like night terrors are. You'll see a scene of something come back too, but like, yeah, night paralysis, you're in your body. It's trapped, just stuck. It's not yeah. like you can in your body now and get up and move. No, like you're literally in your dream, but anything can happen to you. Anything can happen, but it's you can't do anything. Dude, that's crazy. You can't switch the scene. You can't do that. You're just, you just. Do you know, wake retract. up not being able to move? No, you, once you wake up and get conscious, you're, you're, you're fine. You can move. It, I usually sit up and just like get my bearings straight for a second. And like, well, that's interesting because sometimes I'll have. Um, like the times where I can think of dreams waking me up, I feel maybe I'm inflating this number, but I feel like a good majority of the dream, those dreams that have woken me up from yeah. sleeping, um, I 
feel like I can recall me laying in bed being like a last moment part of that. Yeah. Like with a little bit of that transition from dreaming that I'm sleeping in bed to waking up from sleeping in bed. Um, but then I also wonder too, is it just my, my brain is like trying to fill in this gap with something, you know, and it's not, I'm not actually seeing the transition, but, but so that makes me think like dreaming, maybe that's a way to kind of wake yourself up. You get you back to your bed and then from there, like your scream technique from there, you scream and then that is like a foolproof, like lucid dreaming method to wake yourself up in an emergency. Get yourself fired up. <laughs> That's an interesting yeah, thought. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird. It's a weird experience. It's really weird. It sucks. But I right, got more. She may. Wait, my story real quick. Um, so I'll be quick. Um, it was at a party up in uh, upstate New York. And I wasn't like we were just starting to drink, but not mm. really like drunk right, or so anything. Want, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was four of us, and we just kind of walked in the backyard, and we're all just chilling. My friend's playing like Grateful Dead on the phone, and no one's like really talking. We're just kind of like jamming out. Yeah. Um, and I see this light come up, and it gets really, really bright, and then like I notice it, and then it's I feel like sees that I notice it so it dims right. and then like zooms away like super fucking fast and right. I'm like holy shit did anybody see that <laughs> there was a kid there and he's like yeah you uh you saw the alien I tried to manifest <laughs> I was like what the fuck yeah, okay. see, isn't that crazy like <laughs> there's the silver line in all of our stories and for so many people that conscious awareness I mean, I don't know how many other people feel that, but I mean, just with our story. Yeah, that thread, that connection. That connection, like, that, like, mind talk, but... It knows us. And then that zipping mode, just gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's trippy. Very trippy. What you think? It's spooky. <laughs> yeah, right before yeah. I, I had my, uh, I saw the star, whatever. Um, right before that, we had gone to the library, and I found a book. That was called How to Contact ETs, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And I got it. I didn't end up reading the whole thing, but I kind of like read the beginning and then skimmed the rest. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I got the point. It was just different ways. Like I already stood, uh, understood the inherent point right. of it on how to contact. It's a it's, uh, link between consciousness. Yeah. It's like um, quantum entanglement, but with consciousness. You can become through thinking the same thoughts or occupying the yeah. same same mind space, frequency, whatever it is, I don't know. But um, you like tune into the same radio station for a second, mm -hmm. so to speak, and uh, they know. You know Just Bluetooth them with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this. My question is, what are their intentions? Or anything like us, we're fucked. Just to check it out, real quick. Be like, what's up? All right, love you guys. <laughs> hey, I got a dip. I gotta go home, get the homework done. Adios. Cheerio. It's been fun. Have a good night. Till the next yeah, one. Spooky. Spooky. <laughs>